Hi, it's Bob with Old One Tools again here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I want to talk a little bit about stropping with the Wicked Edge system. And when we talk about um, uh, strops and, uh, and other hones, um, there's a lot of opinions and, and people have different ideas about uh, what's the best material for particular knives and for particular outcomes. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the way that I use them and what I like um, using the strops for on the Wicked Edge. So we actually carry um, the strops in four different materials for the Wicked Edge. The leather strops, which come with the Pro Pack 1 and the Pro Pack 2 standard, are the most, most common that people are going to use. We also carry balsa wood strops, kangaroo leather strops, and uh, nano cloth strops. So what I've, I find the strops do for me in terms of performance is they give the bevel a little more shine and they give the cutting edge a little more bite. Um, and I always like finishing with a strop no matter what um, I'm sharpening. Let's first talk about uh, the way that the strops come out of the package. They're going to come for you blank, that is with no, no grit on them at all um, on either side. And with the standard Wicked Edge, if they're included with the paste, the paste is going to come in a syringe, and all the syringes will be labeled with the grit size, as will the handles. So in this case, we've got a 5 micron and a 3.5 micron, and this happens to be the 5 micron paste, and then this um, set will be the 3.5 micron paste. So when you do your initial application, again, there's, there's varying opinions. My particular method um, for applying is to do one side of the strop, and I, I do a nice um, inch or inch and a half worth of, of paste on there. Um, close that back up and then I like taking the two and, and using the two strops together to spread this, this paste out and then rubbing them together. There are other people who like using gloves um, to smear it around or your finger and washing your finger. The thing you're going to want to avoid with, um, with the strops is any contamination of, of larger particles so you always want to protect the strops from getting contaminated. So spread that, that paste out really nicely on the one side, and then this one is ready to go. When you start stropping the knife, it's actually going to come off in, in pretty large quantities. Here in Santa Fe, it takes uh, usually about three to five knives before it stops coming off, and the strop will smooth out um, and start to feel better. For me, um, I do about 20 to 25 strokes on most knives when I work on them, and I'll get um, anywhere from 50 to 60 sharpenings out of one application like that on the strops. Um, the only way you can really tell that it's time to reapply is when you look at the side of the knife and you look at your bevel or you feel your cutting edge or cut with it and it doesn't quite have the bite that, that you're used to getting or it doesn't have the shine, then I go ahead and apply a little bit more and in that case I do a lot less, just three small dollops on there and spread them out again over the surface and start working with them. So easy application method um, for the pace. I like storing my strops always with the fine grits together and the coarse grit on the outside. And I use a plastic bag and um, there's plastic bags that the straps come in or you can use just a sandwich size bag, um, Ziploc. I like sliding them down in. Um, so again, I've always got the, the fine side together and the coarse on the outside. And then I just wrap them up and store them away until I'm ready for the next use. That keeps them from getting dusty or dirty. You don't have to worry about them coming in contact with your diamond stones or your other hones and getting additional grit on them or anything. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual stropping technique on a knife. We have a lot of customers who will contact us, particularly after the first time they try using the strops and they have a problem with, um, with cutting them up a lot. So a couple of tips that you, can, uh, that you can use to avoid that. Um, and let me just mention too, I mean, even when you've been using the system for years, um, you will get, uh, still get nicks in your, in your um, straps from time to time. As the knives get longer and you're just uh, you know, working away fast, it's, it's not bad. Um, to do that. The straps are still perfectly usable um, at this point. You'll find sometimes that they'll get a little bumpy going over the knife edge, in which case I just take them off the rod, flip them over, and go the opposite way, and that'll usually smooth that right back out. As long as you haven't taken a big chunk out of them, it's not a problem at all having, um, having some nicks and cuts um, in the surface of the stropping material. So, so when we... Um, First use the strops on here, again, you're going to get quite a bit of paste off. I like stropping at the same angle that I'm working at. Um, there are people who like reducing the angle, so if you're sharpening at a 20 degree angle, reducing the angle to 19 or 18 um, and get better results. Clay at Wicked Edge, his testing um, seems to indicate that that does give you a little improvement in sharpness. If you're having a problem with when you strop the knife actually getting duller, um, then definitely go ahead and reduce your pressure that you're putting against the knife and bring that angle in a couple degrees. So in terms of nicking the straps, what often happens, or what happens is as you're moving around this circle on the rod, on the pivot, 
this, you can see that the strop begins to move down into the blade um, as you pass the center point. So you've got to be moving up the rod faster than you're moving forward or you're actually going to be cutting uh, right, the cutting edge right into the leather. So a way to avoid that, particularly as you're learning the system, is just to do short overlapping strokes. You don't have to do the whole knife in one pass. You can just do short strokes starting at the heel and going to the tip and coming back. Again, I like going both directions. And again, these are trailing edge strokes. You're going up and away. If you go the other way, obviously, you'll also be cutting right into the leather and we'll, uh, we'll whittle the surface away. So you can just do those short overlapping strokes. Short, even shorter ones work totally fine while you're learning the technique. They aren't, obviously, the strops are not nearly as forgiving as a diamond stone um, for going into the edge. So. And then you can do just some nice, long, slow strokes to, to even your work in and make sure that it goes even over the full edge of the knife. And you can see I'm leaving um, the green diamond paste, I think you can see, on the, uh, on the cutting edge there. So that's great. And whenever you, uh, whenever you do strop, I didn't, uh, I didn't mention, we are going to want to clean the edge um, when you move from your stones to your strops. I like using uh, just a blue shop towel and a little rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. Um, just getting the shop towel a little bit wet. This is an easy spot to cut yourself when you're cleaning the knife, so keep your finger down below the cutting edge, and I like wiping up and along to clean. You'll do that when you finish with your hones, and then again in between each grit, because you don't want to move the, the larger diamonds from the five side to the three and a half side. Um, and again, when you move to a finer grit, you'd want to clean it each time to ensure that you're not cross-contaminating the straps. So. And then once that's done, you would be ready to go on to your next grid. So let's talk a little bit about the, the materials that we have and what I like using them for then. Um, leather is my general finishing strop that I use um, for most everything. I think it gives a, um, a really nice cutting edge and a really nice shine. Um, and, and I usually use it down to about a half micron. Um, I don't go much finer than that um, with the leather strops at all. Um, I, I don't know that the, that the uh, leather isn't overwhelming the grit a little bit um, when you get into the super fine um, emulsions um, or paste sizes. Um, balsa, the second material that we use, has got a lot of stiffness and it's really great for touch-ups and that's what I use it for mainly in my setup. Um, when you come back to, to refresh a knife and touch it back up, the leather um, will sometimes not bring the cutting edge back for you, which means then you have to go back onto your hones and put back in some scratches that you've already polished out. So the balsa it provides a good alternative. You can use it then to try to strop the knife, bring the cutting edge back, and avoid having to go back onto your ceramics or your diamonds to restore the edge. I find it's also great on ceramic knives. Um, leather doesn't do a whole lot, in my experience, in bringing back a ceramic edge or, or improving a ceramic knife edge. But balsa seems to do a really nice job of, um, of actually improving the edge when you're done with your really fine diamond tapes um, or stones. So um, balsa wood is great for that. It can be used entirely in place of leather. There are a lot of people who like using it completely um, and not using leather at all. It polishes about the same. It produces about the same edge quality. Like I said, for me, the standout is really touch-ups and ceramic knives. So the next uh, material is actually um, the kangaroo leather. And the kangaroo leather for the straps that we make is from uh, Ken Schwartz. Um, he selects um, a really nice thin leather. It's got, uh, it's got very little thickness um, to it, so it has very little give. Um, I really like the kangaroo at very fine grits, um, at a quarter micron and smaller. There are a lot of people who use it um, at coarser grits, and, and it works, you know, performs just as well there. It really polishes out scratches really nicely at the fine grits and gives you a really nice mirrored finish beyond what you can uh, do with the leather or the balsa. And then when you get down into the really, really fine uh, grits, again, a quarter micron or smaller, Ken Schwartz also does a material called nanocloth, which is a virtual um, texture-free material. So when you put your emulsions on this in either a CBN or a, um, a polycrystalline diamond or a monocrystalline diamond material, you're really going to see that particular grit um, shine. You're not going to get a, an over effect. It's not going to be overwhelmed by the substrate that it's on. So you'll really be able to see the, the results of the polishing with those really fine grits um, producing your mirror finishes. So again, that's the, the leather, the balsa, the kangaroo, and the nanocloth are the four that we carry for the Wicked Edge system. Once again, this is Bob with Old One Tools to Stay Sharp in Santa Fe. Thanks for taking a look at our video, and you can find more information on our website, www.oldawan.com.